Hello, this is Jareth Tempest, and this is going to be a beginner's guide to Magical Destiny, Experience the Power of Your Holy Guardian Angel by Damon Brand. Uh, as always, I am not a member of the Gallery of Magic. I'm just, uh, these are just my personal opinions on the, on this book, and, uh, and overall, I think it's a good book. I'm really excited about this book, but this, uh, this video ties in with my podcast that I've been doing as we talk about the Holy Guardian Angel, uh, what it is, how to contact it, and how to achieve that uh, almost mystical knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel that we hear so much about in Western magic these days. And so, you know, traditionally the, the way that people have said that you get in contact with your Holy Guardian Angel is the, um, the Abramelin rite which is six months or 18 months of going off, being alone and praying. And, and then finally, after all this time, you reach this knowledge and conversation with your guardian angel. And then you summon Lucifer and several other spirits and you bind them and get familiars from them. And then you can work the magic coley, um, magic squares and stuff. So that's kind of the the old fashioned way of doing it. And a lot of people will swear up and down to this day that that is the only way to do it. When even Crowley, who is the one that popularized this in the minds of Western magicians today, didn't complete the Abermelon. Uh, he bought a house specifically for it and didn't finish it and uh, ended up finishing it a different way. And he, he has a different method in, in his books uh, using the, um, the bornless right or the headless right, whichever translation you want to use. So yeah, there's lots of different ways to do this. And that's the point that Damon Brand is trying to make in this book is that he, he really, what he's trying to do in this book more than anything is demystify the concept of the Holy guardian angel and what it is. And I think he does an amazing job of, of, of doing that and explaining it in down to earth terms that everyone can understand. I think that maybe he erred too much on the side of caution and spent a lot of time explaining what it isn't and not maybe not enough time explaining what it actually is. If there, if I was to, to point out a flaw in the book, that might be it. But overall, this is still an amazing book that I think anyone interested in this topic should, should definitely check out. So there's really not a... This, more than any other book um, in their catalog, and this has the most reading to do. And so in the, the first section, Blissful Destiny, it's just kind of the introduction and kind of explaining what I've already talked about here is that, you know, kind of what the Holy Garden Angel concept of it is, you know, and kind of the ways that people have talked about doing it in the past. And yeah, it just points out that, that you don't really need any any magic to actually make this happen. It's not a magical process. It's more of a natural process, something that you should go through on your spiritual journey. It's, it's just part of the process. And it's something that's supposed to happen fairly early in your magical career, not something that happens at the end. So it's not, in, it's not like the enlightenment, you know, it's, you know, it's what you're striving towards or something. This is something that you should do early on after you've kind of got the basics down and then that will help carry you the rest of the way. So, yeah. And, you know, we go through these different chapters and he kind of just, he just keeps um, bringing up different aspects of the topic of how you don't have to do this long drawn out ritual that it's not a magical process and that it's a, you know, your angel wants to contact you and it's a, your, you know, your angels with you all the time. It's already speaking to you. You just need to learn how to hear it. You know, and he, and he talks about in, in here, and this was, it's, it's been an ongoing thing. This, they, this book has built up a lot. He'd been talking about releasing it for years and hadn't done it. And one of the main reasons he didn't want to release it, was, or he, he originally at one point was even going to make it for free on the website. The reason that they were so 
anxious about putting it out is because they have a real track record with the gallery of magic of being, you know, giving you magic you can depend on. You know, you, you can you can do the ritual and you can be fairly confident that it's going to work for you. But there's nothing guaranteed about the Holy Guardian Angel. This is a, a personal process and there's no ritual that's going to guarantee you results in it. I think he was really worried that his fans weren't going to appreciate that kind of thing from him. And yeah, he and he talks about how, you know, you can't do a ritual and expect just because you've done the ritual that this is going to result in this knowledge and conversation with the Holy Guardian Angel. And so, yeah, you, you know, he spends a lot of time just kind of explaining, trying to, like I said, demystify the process. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a really good read and there's a lot of really good information and I don't want to try to, I'm not going to try to sum it all up to um uh because you know to try to save you the read but you really you really ought to read this book again if you're if you're interested in the holy garden angel at all you should really read this book even if you don't use his method it's a really good um background kind of in bringing bringing this concept down to earth because he even says himself is that you know by the time you finish reading all of the the main part of the book you can come up with your own way of of making contact you don't have to use his way and so it, yeah it's just a really good book as far as explaining how there you don't have to do the abermelon and more than anything else this is something that i think really needs to be beat into our western occult communities right now is you don't have to do the abermelon now, if you want to do the Abermelon, that's fine. Do the Abermelon, but don't think that you have to do it. And don't think that you're better than somebody else because you did do it. It's like the point is to achieve knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel, not to do it in the most rigorous, hard line fashion that there is. You know, that's, that's your... I hate, I hate it when people say this in the spiritual communities, like, oh, that's your ego talking, but that's very much your ego. So, you know, we, he doesn't really spend a lot of time talking about what it is, as I pointed out, and I'm going to go into more depth than that in my podcast in this next episode. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about what it is either. But you just need to know that it's with you all the time and that every step you take towards it, they're going to take 10 steps towards you. And so anything that you do to try to make an effort to get in contact with them, they're going to take advantage of it. And so really what you need to just, the main points that you need to do is just realize that you need to be quiet and that you need to listen. And it's just another of the little voices in your head that you need to figure out is them. And there's some different tricks that you can use to, to help make that happen. And that's really what he does in this book is, is point out some of the things that you can do. And he calls them the protocols. And yeah, we're just, I'm sorry, we're just going to skip all of the, the text in this book because there's just so much of it. I can't summarize all of it other than to say that he just, it's a demystification of this concept that's been built up so much. But the protocols which the, the, are the things that you do. They're fairly simple things that you just do on a regular basis. And he points out, you know, you can't rush through them and say, oh, I've done all seven protocols. I am uh, I must have knowledge and conversation with my Holy Guardian Angel now. It's like, no, that's not how it works. You, you go, you, you try, you can try them all. You can cycle through them. You can find the ones that work for you the best and just work with those. You just got to find your own way of doing it. And the first one is very simple. It's simply... Uh, and well, one thing he does bring up that's un- important is intention that whatever you do, you need to do it with intention of reaching you know, that making contact with, or achieving knowledge and conversation with your Holy Garden angel. And you need to also realize that it doesn't mean that your angel is going to appear to you in physical form in front of you. And then you're going to just have a conversation. Some people might be lucky enough to have that. 
and but most of us aren't it's just going to be a voice in our head or a picture in our head that we can interact with like in a path working where you're using your imagination more often than not that is the form it's going to take and then you're going to be like oh well no, that's not real well of course it's real i mean if you can't accept the fact that the bulk of magic happens within you and your imagination is the tool that you use to work with it then you know you, you're never going to really get anywhere anyway because that's just what it is so you have to accept using your imagination to uh to make the contact with with any spirit not just your holy guardian angel so well, yeah you just need to do the work with intention you need to do it with the intention of i'm going to do this and it will bring me closer to my angel and it will help me make contact and so yeah the first one is just um to open your arms in a welcoming way with in, with the intention of welcoming your angel and that's really it i mean it sounds really simple but you know he, re, he you if you read the thing there's a little bit more to it it's just a it's a way of mentally you know using your physical body to help you mentally welcome something in and you don't need to worry about anything else getting in because whenever you're working towards your angel your angel knows that you're trying to welcome it in and it'll shut down everything else that's just what it does it's this one of its things that it's able to do is, is you know protect you and um intercede between you and any other spirit so then you you know you have your arms spread and you're just mentally trying to sense your angel and you're just reaching out and that's really all you're trying to do with that first protocol and then protocol two and again, I'm just breaking these down real simply. You do, you do need to read the book to get everything that he's... I mean, please don't try to just watch this video and then do what I say and then, you know, make it happen that way. Just read the book. You're not having to do six months of isolation alone. So reading a book is, is, is fairly simple. So, yeah, you can at least read a book. So protocol two is, to put it simply... Uh, you're asking your angel for help whenever you're dealing with something you don't want to do it for every little thing but you're just asking your angel for help if there's an important decision that you need to make in your life or anything that's important to you you know you don't want to necessarily do it you know ask your angel for help picking out clothes to wear to work that day but if you're going on a first date on somebody that you're really into yeah you can ask the angel to help you pick out the right outfit for that and they may or may not help but that's that's not the point it's that you begin to rely on them for help and guidance and so yeah you just want to start asking for help okay protocol three is active intention and this is where you do something physical to uh try to with the intention of making contact with your angel and you know this can be something like going for a walk in nature or but it can be anything it can be doing the laundry it can be dancing it could be like you not sex sex is probably just the not the right thing for for this you're either going to be too into the sex or to, uh, holy garden angels are a more internal thing it's not something you want to do with somebody else you know but you can go to the gym or whatever and just do it and do it on a regular basis and this is like becomes your thing or you can just try to apply it to everything that you do or everything you do you're doing it as though you're doing it for your angel out of you know love and devotion to them uh, protocol four is releasing pain and this is where you just offer up your pain to your angel and you go and like anything that happens throughout your day or something that happens you just offer that pain or you can think about something that was painful in your past some trauma that you experienced and you can offer that to your angel and see if your angel makes it feel better and this is one of the things that you, that the angel does do and he he doesn't try to explain what the angel does so much as gives you these examples and then you kind of figure out oh well my angel can help help me with my pain and my suffering and and stuff so yeah that's a good one 
protocol five is called perspective. I don't remember what this is. I have to read a little bit. He spends most of this time talking about like, you're going to have to use your imagination and, and just tell it, trying to reassure people that your imagination that you have is fine. Even if you have no visual imagination, you still have something. And you just need to cultivate a, a playful attitude. If you can play pretend in your head in some form, you can do this. And you can do all magic that way. You don't have to have a real sharp visual imagination. Oh, right. This is the one where you imagine yourself from an angel's perspective outside of you and you see yourself. And you look, kind of try to look at yourself the way your angel would look at you. And then you want to... So you want to look at yourself from outside yourself and feel this great love and compassion for yourself. And that's, you know, that's really kind of it. Um, and again, you want to read, you know, read his examples and stuff. He gives some good, good advice. Oh yeah. So protocol six is recalling and I'm going to be honest. I'm not really sure what he's getting at with this one. He's got three different versions of it. And again, you always want to do everything with the intention of knowing your angel. And then you want to think about something that's significant happened in your life. Kind of then think about how things progressed from there. And, you know, based on what your, your actions were, did, you know, what were the consequences of your actions? Um, did that make a you know, difference in anything? Were there any, you know, random chances or how did luck play into it? Uh, and then just kind of has different versions of, of, of that. And I guess some like, you might want to, and then one of them, you kind of start thinking, well, how could your angel have helped you in that or something? Like I said, this is not one that I really understand real well, what he's trying to get at. Um, and then protocol seven is really a, an interesting one. It's called manifesting at will. And this is where you just basically say, Hey angel, I would like the thing. And then you see if your angel will get you the thing. And it really is that easy. You just want to use your mind to try to manifest something by asking and asking your angel for it. And this is one of the, again, this is one of those things where you just like, he doesn't come out and tell you what your angel does, but he kind of shows you, hey, when you have contact with your angel, you can just, you don't need to do all these complicated rituals anymore. You can just ask them to do it. So yeah, um, those are the protocols and they're, like I said, they're real easy and you just kind of work through them, find the ones that work for you. Um, I would definitely try all of them on a, on, on a regular basis of some kind, because sometimes the ones that are uncomfortable might actually be the one that helps you the most. So I would give them all a chance at least. And then he has what he calls the quest for contact, which are several sigils that he has created and what they all do is they just they hit you with a blast of angelic magic and the theory is that if you keep getting hit with this angelic magic that you will then become aware of what the angelic presence feels like and be more aware of your angel and this is the area of the book that I'm least convinced on because I'm not convinced that your angel is an angel. We use the word angel and it's, it's, it's as close as it's as good any, as any other word. But if we start getting down to trying to figure out energy, energy signatures, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, some people, absolutely. It's going to be an angel, but you know, I've had spirits say otherwise, but we'll talk about that more in my next episode of the podcast. Um, but the first one is simply the 72 name of God, 72 letter name of God, sorry, uh, written out in Hebrew. And, you know, you just gaze at the white part of the sigil and with the intention of letting the, that power come through and it doesn't take any real effort. Uh, it's a very powerful name in itself. You just look at the just gaze at it as you do a lot of these. You don't have to do any emotional transmutation or, or anything like that. And then the uh, the second sigil is 
are the 72 names of God that are derived from that 72 letter name of God. So you have three rows. You know, you just gaze at the, again, at the white, but you, but you kind of gaze through all of them. You use the kind of an inverted way of looking at it so that the, the black sigil will get into your subconscious better. Yeah, I mean, you when you have all of that written out, that's a very powerful sigil. And then the rest use Enochian. Uh, and they are hitting you with several layers of, of, of the aethers, which are sort of like the different le levels of different levels of heaven. And he uses the Anakian alphabet to do it. And he has these sigils. I've never seen sigils like these. I'm not sure where he um, created them from. And I'm I've gotten to where I use Anakian almost exclusively, and so I get something from the letters. I'm not necessarily getting a whole lot from the sigils though, but you know, everyone's results will vary. And honestly, you know, and I think he's even open about this, this whole, the, the sigils are just bonus. I think he included them mainly because he feels like there had to be some kind of magic ritual because this is a magic book, but really, if your angels are, and I'm not going to say it's a part of you, but let's just say that it's an entity that's entangled within you. It's with you and it's, it's, it's an internal part of you without being part of you. And so you don't need a ritual to bring it out. You just need to pay attention to yourself and get to know yourself and begin to realize that it's, happening you know what, that it's within you and that it's speaking to you and that it's trying to help you and that's really all you need to do this is why you know all you really need to do is meditate and you can do this i think the apromelon is simply to force somebody who's like an extrovert who doesn't know how to sit still and be quiet it just forces them to sit still and be quiet for several months until they can finally get it in Sorry, if you're hearing weird noises, it's my dog. She's, I don't know, I think she's waking up and starting to groan and grunt. Anyway, that's really it. I highly, highly recommend this book. I'm, I'm always a fan of any book that will come out and be honest and say, look, you don't need to listen to all of this stuff that everyone's been saying all this time. There's an easier way. Uh, and the Holy Guardian Angel is just one of those things that, man, it's, it, it needs to be demystified a lot. People have built it up to be so much more than it is. And it's an amazing thing, don't get me wrong. But it is not the end-all, be-all of the magical journey. And we need to remember that and treat it as it is and... and, and and yeah, and this book will help you make contact or at least help you find your own way to do it. But, um, and yeah, and if you, and like from, like, if you don't like the sigils, you can make your own, you can come up with your, you know, use, you know, use this book as a jumping off point for your own experimentation. This is, this is your holy guardian angel. And this is your journey, your spirituality. You need to, you know, don't feel like you have to do it any one way. Don't let people tell you that you can do it, that what you're doing is wrong. This is your life and this is your angel and it's been given to you and it wants to make contact with you. So don't let anyone tell you that you have to do it this way. You have to do it that way when you or, or when you're reading a book. Oh, this is how you have to do it. No, you do not have to do it any particular way. And this book says that too. So you don't have to do the Abermelon. You don't have to do it the way Crowley did it. You don't have to do it the way Damon Brand does it. You don't have to do it the way I say it. Just, but it is important that you, it is, a, it is an important step and it's an amazing step. It's something I just, I helped my wife accomplish just the other day. And I will be sharing that with all of you very soon as a uh, a guided meditation so hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss that 
um, it's not a guarantee. She was already very close. She was, and this just was a little something to help, help push her over the edge so that she could make that connection. And so if you've, if you feel like you've been getting close, uh, and you just need, you need a little help, just, you know, hang out and, uh, watch my channel and I'll have a, a guided meditation come in that will help you with that. So keep your eye out for that. And then I will have on my next episode of my podcast, uh, becoming all flame. We will talk about what the Holy guardian angel actually is according to what Raziel, Lucifer and other spirits have, have told us. And you can find my podcast here on YouTube. It's also on different podcatchers, Apple and Google play and, and all the rest. But yeah, it's called becoming all flame. So, you know, check that out. We started last episode where I talked about the movie, a dark song, which is a, a fictionalized version of the Abermelon, right? So I kind of talk about the Abermelon there and what it is and what it isn't. And now here we're doing, we're talking about Damon Brand's book. And then the next episode, I'll talk about the, uh, uh, what the spirits have told us specifically about the Holy guardian angel. And then again on YouTube, I'll have that guided meditation that will maybe help you make contact. And that will be the, well, you know, the end of my little Holy Garden Angel bit that we're doing here, which I really hope helps you guys. And thank you so much for, uh, for listening and for being patient as I've been gone all these years. It's good to be back on YouTube. We've got a lot more coming on the channel. So yeah, definitely please hit that subscribe button, like, and comment and do all the things. And I will see you very soon. All right. Bye-bye.